Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my latest chat on melatonin. If you excuse me, I've still got a bit of a cold and uh, chest infection, but uh, trying to get some work done all the same. Today we're going to talk about melatonin. Now, melatonin uh, seems to uh, court some controversy because uh, people think that it could be used as a supplement uh, and there have been some studies that shows it does help perhaps uh, with getting over some areas of jet lag, but there are kind of bigger aspects of, of those studies that need to be considered. Um, melatonin should really start to be produced as uh, the onset of darkness uh, ensues. So as the sun goes down, darkness is there, melatonin should be produced, and it starts to signal the, the aspect of sleep. And we should start to see neurotransmitters such as serotonin and histamine start to diminish. And then we should start to see some of the other neurotransmitters and other compounds like GABA uh, and adenosine, which take us into our onset of sleep latency. Now, the, the argument is, is that people often are saying that people are deficient in melatonin because we're, we're working long nights and there are aspects such as blue light from computers, which are very relevant. But we need to consider other aspects of, of, of why melatonin is often produced in excess. Um, certainly in cultures where they go through phases of winter and there's a lack of sunlight. One of the uh, theories is that the lack of sunlight and the kind of aspects of darkness, long, long days of darkness, shorter days of lightness, is instrumental in producing more uh, aspects of melatonin. And melatonin is, uh, works against the thyroid hormone. So it tends to shut down the ability to produce energy really efficiently. Uh, it also shuts core temperature down. So just like some of the other hormones that we see, like growth hormone uh, uh, and other hormones like that, it's important that they tend to be produced at night time uh, and not during the day because they can antagonize many mechanisms that are related to, say, insulin sensitivity, adequate use of glucose. And we want to make sure that the hormones that we're kind of uh, optimizing throughout the day are literally optimized throughout the day. And, and the ones that come out at night are kept uh, where they should be at night time. Now we think about the, the aspect of darkness and uh, long, long days of, of, of lack of light. This can be a problem because it can induce more melatonin production throughout the day. Also, if you tend to live in a country where you have darkness, you see a lot of people that wear sunglasses. One of the a prominent theory that's coming out now is if you're wearing sunglasses all the time, the body doesn't perceive um, lightness. So sunglasses will shut out about 75 to 90 percent of, of natural sunlight. That means what should happen throughout the day, whereas we get adequate sunlight coming through our retina, through our retinal hypothalamic tract, that stimulates a suprachiasmatic nucleus in the brain, and it lets us know that it's daylight. If you're wearing sunglasses all the time, you might be predisposing yourself to more melatonin production. In a normally healthy person, this might be absolutely fine. Some people wear sunglasses, one, because they actually find it really, really bright, or they don't like to make eye contact with people. But sometimes the aspects of not liking bright light can be associated with a downregulation of some of the hormones. Usually the adrenal hormones, for example, one of the tests that we can do is the Raglan's uh, pupillary contraction test, where you shine a bright light into someone's eye to see if it can hold the contraction. When that fails, it's suggested that the uh, uh, adrenal glands perhaps aren't, aren't churning out uh, as, as much of the, the hormones that, as they should do. But this can be a, a, a knockdown effect further down the line from perhaps the thyroid not working effectively. Perhaps our blood sugar levels aren't balanced effectively. Perhaps we're even going through long bouts of emotional or physical stress and the adrenals aren't, aren't able to cope with that. But maintaining blood sugar levels, eating properly, getting adequate sunlight are part of the process that keeps our body functioning as well as it could do. Now let's think about the, the melatonin again. You're wearing sunglasses all day long and as I said in perhaps a normal healthy person you can probably get away with that. But if you have energy related issues, mood related issues, digestion uh, and other factors that are suggested that perhaps your body isn't organizing itself as well as it could then wearing sunglasses all day long not letting the pineal gland um, understand that it shouldn't be producing a melatonin not understanding that the body that it should be uh, exposed to daylight now usually what might happen is the sunlight might be hitting the skin and uh, we know that when sunlight hits the skin not only does it produce vitamin d it also produces adequate amounts of progesterone which is a protective hormone in both males and females predominantly more in females but also in both sexes so what we're going to start to consider is should you wear sunglasses if you want to improve health well some people say well i just find it too bright 
Well, you can find it too bright, but that might actually just be a down regulation. So you've got to start getting your body in shape so that it can tolerate bright light. And that's quite important. So that might be managing your blood sugar levels effectively. It might be eating more regularly. It might be even uh, the need for managing hormones like your thyroid hormone more effectively or managing stress more effectively. So if you are wearing sunglasses all the time, and you do have mood or energy issues, start to consider the facts of, of what melatonin might be doing to you in your current state. Here we can see from uh, um, uh, a study, you can actually see the link up here where this was taken from, is what melatonin does in a variety of people. There's a number of people taking the study. But what is suggestive of this normal uh, factor related to uh, how melatonin should be produced is that you can see that during the days of daylight, it's often kept well below 10 picograms per milliliter. And then with the onset of darkness, you can see in most people here, around starting around anywhere around about the kind of 9, 10, 11 mark, depending on, on, on the, the time factors, which would have been probably standardized based upon the, the area of study. Uh, you can see around about 11 o'clock is where it really starts to kick in for people and melatonin does start to increase. Uh, and, and this is, is, is panned out on all of these subjects that have been used. Now, much like other hormones, we know that cortisol starts to rise at certain times throughout the, uh, the night. And you can see here, round about where melatonin is hitting its peak, is where cortisol would start to hit its peak. Because that we start to use our fuel quite inefficiently, we start to expend glucose that's stored in the liver, and we start to produce cortisol when we need to start breaking energy down from um, fat to convert to glucose. So this area where melatonin is, is produced during nighttime is the peak time when we produce other hormones that will start uh, gradually taking out of our, our waking state. Now, what you can see here is within most of the studies that around about this kind of uh, three, four, five, and, and kind of coming up to the eight o'clock mark in, in most people, melatonin is reaching its um, lowest point. Uh, and this is because as light is coming through, um, it's coming through probably the eyelids when we start to wake up, it goes in through the retinal hypothalamic tract and back into the, to the, the SCN in the brain again. And we start to produce um, hormones and neurotransmitters of weight when it's like serotonin, histamine, oxycretin uh, and others as well. And plus we're producing more cortisol as well. So it's really important that we kind of look at this and say, well, should we be taking melatonin and should we be looking to increase melatonin? The answer is probably no. And there's quite a few studies that have shown that increasing melatonin production throughout the day can negatively affect reproductive tissue. There's a really interesting case study, and if anyone's interested in this, of, of uh, a subject, uh, a male subject, who actually had his pineal gland removed, which suggests he would not be producing any melatonin at all. But it didn't seem to have any negative effects on his uh, uh, reproductive tissue, for example. So, but when they found they started supplementing him with melatonin, it negatively affected the amount of sperm and the, the quality of sperm that was being produced. So, in, in a nutshell, looking at this, it's really important that we keep melatonin production during its optimal window, which is really kind of onset of darkness and diminishing when, when we stop sleep um, and when we wake up. Uh, if we look to increase melatonin during these times, it's going to have a negative knock on effect to various tissues, uh, such as reproductive tissues, and perhaps also to our metabolic rate because it, it does suppress thyroid hormone as well. So my advice to anybody who's, who's, who's out there and who's, who's basically wearing sunglasses all the time is what you need to consider is getting tolerant of light again, walking around in the sunlight without sunglasses on. Being able to suppress melatonin production is one of the tricks that we have in our arsenal for making our biology work better. Um, it can have a number of knock-on effects uh, that would keep our thyroid healthy, keep the amount of energy that we produce, which will, which will improve our mood states. And the theory behind that, the uh, increased melatonin and uh, depression is certainly gaining a lot of uh, ground. So hopefully you found that useful. One of the things I want you to do is go away and start getting, um, getting light happy, getting out and uh, walking or exercising or do what you like to do in the light uh, and see how your health improves over a period of time. I'm sure you'll find it useful in the long run.